On this episode of Hot Mike with Houston and Hogan, Dave and I just scratch the surface of the career of perhaps the most popular artist in country music of all time, Mr. Johnny Cash. Thanks for joining us. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Hot Mike with Houston and Hogan. I'm the Houston part. Hello, Randy, and all the ships at sea. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, my friend. How are you? Doing uh, fantastic. We're talking about Johnny Cash today. You know, I've been excited about this. We talked uh, via email a couple of weeks ago and came up with Johnny Cash as a topic. And I'm just, we don't have any prepared notes or anything. I think we're just going to talk and tell stories about our experiences uh, during the life and times of one of the greats. Johnny Cash. I've got a few things rolling around in my mind. One of the things rolling around in my weak mind (laughs) is his name. Now, his name is J.R. Cash. When he was born, his dad wanted to name him John. His mom wanted to name him Ray. So they compromised, and his name is actually J.R. Cash. When he went into the military, the Air Force, they told him they could he he couldn't use initials for a first name. He had to have a first name, so he put down John, John R. Cash, and then when he started his music career, he became Johnny Cash. Wow! There's a little tidbit for you. There you go. Uh, and, and of course, he had a a tragic childhood. I asked Johnny one time. Yeah, he lost his older brother. Yeah. Jack, I believe was his name. Is that right? I think so. I think it was a sawmill accident or something like that. Yeah. And uh, Johnny never got over that. I had a, I've, I've emceed, th- uh, I was thinking the other day, three shows with uh, Johnny Cash, two in Asheville, one in Gray, Tennessee, which is between Johnson City and Kingsport at the Appalachian Regional Fair. He was uh, uh, one of the entertainers one year, and I emceed that. But I only had one chance to interview Johnny. And if I recall correctly, one of the shows that I emceed was at the old city auditorium, and the other was at the, at that time, relatively new Civic Center. I believe that's correct, but I interviewed Johnny at the... uh, City Auditorium in Asheville, first time I'd met him, and I asked him about his childhood, and he talked about it. One of the things that stands out in my mind is, I said, what are some of the memories from your childhood growing up there in Dias, Arkansas, along the Mississippi River? And he said, floods. Floods. He said, we were always, no, floods and tornadoes. He said, we're always worried about floods and tornadoes. He said, that's one of the things I remember from my childhood. And he wrote a song, you know. How high is the water, mama? Five feet high in the rising. Yeah. Great song. I love that yeah. song. Yeah. Johnny, Johnny uh, another thing I remember, Randy, and I'm sure you've got some stories, so I'll tell this one and then you can talk a little bit. But one of the things that I remember most about Johnny was the people, I'm, I'm closing my eyes as I think about this, because I can see these people in my vision. The people who were standing in the doorway outside the city auditorium, and I particularly remember the people in Gray, Tennessee, at the Appalachian Regional Fair. There was a uh, chain-link fence, behind the stage, and they had, they had a, a building there with a stage and dressing rooms. And it was enclosed by a chain link fencing on the back. And then they set out some seats in front of the stage, and then they had a grandstand. I was the MC of the program and uh, of the show, and I can see those people now. On the other side of that fence, you know, Johnny, the man in black, sang about the uh, the downtrodden, the people that life has not treated so well, so good. 
And these fellows were there. Look like hobos. Homeless. Homeless. Uh, I remember one fellow on crutches. Maybe six or eight of those guys. Johnny was a hero to those kind of people. That's where I, I want to go. He connected too. with those people. How did he do? Wh- how what did he do? Say, think, or portray that created that persona? He had it definitely. He was a complete package. Uh, he had the voice that everybody could understand. He was a good writer. He had a very simple. Uh, especially when he started, just had two, Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two. Right, His right. His music was simple, yet it was... Deep. Yeah. 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 And from the very beginning. And then he was, he, he had a, a certain look about him that... He was a giant of a physical man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That, uh, that, don't let that escape. He yeah. was a giant of a man. And then his legend grew as time went on, and he openly, many times, talked about his drug problems. Right. So he related to the average person, or particularly the the person that was down and out. They could connect with uh, Johnny Cash. But I'll never forget that scene, particularly at the Appalachian Fairgrounds, of those down and outers. You saw it. And they asked me, could you get Johnny Cash to come out and say hello or give us an autograph? And I had to explain that I'm just the MC. I have no yeah. control over what Johnny does, but I'll pass the word along to his manager, which I did. And I had to go on to other things after the show. So I don't know if uh, Johnny was able to go back there and talk to those people or not. You know, and later on uh, in uh, his career, he well, I don't know that it was later on. It, it was just that uh, he formed this bond and this friendship with uh, Reverend Billy Graham. And appeared on his crusades. Many of his crusades. Mm-hmm. He sure did. And, uh, you know, somebody else from Dias, Arkansas, while we're on the subject of Johnny's hometown, is, you remember Buddy Jewell? Yes, I remember the name. Okay, he had a song in the fifties or rock and roll or kind of, you know, he had a song called to help pour out the rain. It's a song about a dad and his daughter Mm -hmm. and his daughter asks the dad, does he talking about heaven and what it's going to be like when we get there. And the, the uh, title is, and one of the lyrics, you think God needs another angel to help pour down the rain? And Buddy Jewell is from Dias, Arkansas also. Okay. And another thing about Buddy Jewell, a little sideline here, he's probably the most successful demo artist in Nashville. Now, he had Pour Down the Rain, and it was a big smash hit. And he had uh, Sweet Southern Comfort which was a top 10 record. And then for whatever reason, his career just, <clears throat> just, just nothing clicked after that. So he started doing demos and he's done over 5,000 demos. Now, for those who don't know, a demo is, you know, a lot of songwriters aren't singers, maybe not even musicians. Right. And they can, or maybe uh, not a very good musician. So when they write a song, they want somebody to sing it in order to be able to take that song and present it to a publishing company or, in some, in some cases, directly to a recording artist. So that so Buddy got into recording demos, and over can you imagine over five thousand songs that he's recorded as demos. And they have a sign there as you're going to Dias, Arkansas, home of Johnny Cash, Buddy Jewell, and somebody else that I can't remember. Uh, somebody perhaps not an entertainer. Maybe not, but it could have been a sign that welcomed uh, Johnny's brother, 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Tommy's Tommy on there. Cash. Tommy's on there, but there's four. There's another one. Okay. Yeah, Tommy. Tommy Cash. I <laughs> played a lot of music uh, in the '70s mm-hmm. by Tommy Cash. Six White Horses. Six White Horses. Was a big hit. Came to mind immediately. But then his recording career uh, didn't work out probably as he had planned, and he became a very successful real estate agent really? in Nashville. Okay. The okay. realtor to the stars. Oh, big bucks. Yeah, big bucks there. And yet got to stay at home, sleep in your own bed at night. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't have to uh, travel. Tommy Cash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Tommy. Now, there's a, you know two, uh, two songs that Johnny recorded of the novelty sort. One piece at a time. Yeah. Where the fella got a job in yeah. Detroit. I play it on my show. Yeah. But yeah. The, and, and the other one? Oni. Yeah, but there's another one. And another one is I've Been Everywhere. No, uh, that's not the novelty. Yeah. Comedy songs. There's another one out there somewhere, folks. Fetch it to us. Is it? Uh, one piece at a time. And... Not a boy named Sue. A boy named Sue. A That's boy it. named Sue. Okay. That's All it. right. Yeah. A boy named Sue. Well, a songwriter named Gary Gentry. Gary's written some hit songs like 1959 by John Anderson. Great song. And uh, The Ride, David Allen Coe. Another great song. Gary Gentry's a good writer, but he wrote a song for Johnny, another novelty song. He said, I've been trying to get a Johnny to cut one of my songs. And uh, Billy Sherrill, who was producing Johnny at the time, uh, told him, he said, D- can you write something? Maybe this was a follow-up to one of those novelty-type mm-hmm. songs. Mm-hmm. So Gary Gentry came up with a song, and it is funny. You'll find it on YouTube if you want to go, called Chicken in Black. <laughs> the Chicken in Black. Now, it is hilarious. I haven't heard that. Okay, the chicken in black. Here's the story. In the song, Johnny's playing himself, singing as Johnny Cash, uh, and and saying that uh, he woke up one morning with a terrible headache, and it lasted for two months, and he went to the doctor and said, Duh. and the doctor said, I hate to tell you this, Johnny, but your your body has outlived your brain. <laughs> <laughs> But I've got a friend who can do a transplant for you up there in New York, <laughs> and he can give you a brand new brain, and he can he can he can make you uh, good again. So Johnny goes to New York and meets the doctor and says, "Oh yes," said we had a bank robber killed last night, <laughs> and said his body shot, but his brain's still good. <laughs> so they transplanted that bank robber's brain into Johnny's head. Yeah into his head so he goes back to nashville and things are working out good <sighs> but he goes into a bank one day and suddenly something came over him <laughs> and he robbed the bank because <laughs> he had that bank robber's brain <laughs> and then roy acuff calls him one day and he says uh, johnny won't you play the opry tonight and he said, sure. So Johnny goes down to play the Opry, and about halfway through, I walked the line. He said, he, he something happened. <laughs> and he said, I robbed everybody at the Ryman of their, <laughs> of their watches and diamonds. <laughs> so he called the doctor up in New York and said, Doc, this is not working out. you got to do something for me. you got to help me. They want my old brain back. <laughs> and, uh, and the doc says, well, sorry to tell you this, Johnny, but your brain, I, I, I transplanted it into a chicken. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that, that chicken has your brain. And said, that I signed that chicken to a 10-year recording contract. And <laughs> that chicken in black is playing all over the country to big audiences and drawing big crowds and lots of money. <laughs> So there's no way I can give you your brain back. <laughs> it's a hilarious song. But the punchline is the video, and you can also see the video online, is terrible. It's one of the worst things you've ever seen in your life. Johnny with a chicken soup and and doing this video. So Waylon, Waylon Jennings told him, said, you look like a buffoon in that 
video. <laughs> and so Johnny had second thoughts, and he got CMT to pull the video, and he refused to sing the song on his concerts. So that's why we haven't heard. Most of the public hasn't heard gotcha. the chicken in black. Gotcha. But what a bad break for the songwriter, Gary. Really? Gentry. Really? <laughs> what a bad break for him. <laughs> How many ways can a deal go wrong? It happened. Well, uh, speaking, that one went wrong. Speaking of songs written for Johnny, uh, and perhaps this is one of the most uh, uh, famous stories about a songwriter writing a song for Johnny Cash in his own mind, the songwriter, and uh, getting it into the hands of Johnny Cash. And I know you know where I'm going with this, but we need to tell it because it's a great story. And some folks might not know the story of Chris Christofferson mm -hmm. writing the song Sunday Morning Coming Down. Oh, what an incredible song. And uh, <coughs> he wrote the song with Johnny in mind. Chris has just returned as uh, a decorated uh helicopter pilot from the Vietnam War actually was asked to stay in the army and be an instructor. Uh, and so the story goes that he broke into a uh, National Guard armory there in Nashville, found the keys and knew how to start up a uh, uh, helicopter and flew it into the backyard of Johnny Cash, his house in Nashville. And Johnny Cash told the story that June was in the kitchen at the sink. And she said, Johnny, there's a helicopter in our backyard. <laughs> and that's how he got Johnny Cash to record Sunday morning coming down. That's a great story. It and, is. and it's great because it's true. True. May have been, you know, there may Embellished have been a a embellishment little. along the way. But right. basically it's true. Yeah. Uh, Chris, we'll do a program on Chris Christopherson. Oh, and easily. I also want to do a program on Mary John Wilkin, the den mother of Music Row. I want to do a program on Mary John Wilkin. She has a had a great life story. She unfortunately is not with us anymore. And all of these but, names that we've mentioned here have come through her home. One more. Johnny how Cash. much time do we have? About uh, four minutes. One more little story yeah. about Johnny Cash. We're going to kind of continue this on a little bit in in our next episode when we switch the topic to train songs. Right. And Johnny was married, of course, to June Cash, second wife. And I can't remember the year they got married, but not too long after they got married. You know, he married June Carter, who was from Hilton's, Virginia, and the Carter family. Right. Mother Maybell and the Carters. Right. And that's not far from the Tri-Cities where I was working. Bristol, Kingsport, Johnson City, for those who are yeah, tuning in. Right. Yeah. And June wrote a book. And she came over to the radio station there in Gray. Our studios were in, in Gray between Johnson City and Kingsport. She came over for an interview about her book. So we're sitting in the office there before recording the interview and Along with June was one of her cousins, Jeanette, I believe. I believe it was Jeanette who was with her. And Jeanette ran the Carter Fold music uh, venue venue for, for years. And I think her daughter Reba is running it now because Jeanette is now deceased. And uh, we were talking about Johnny, and I said, how's Johnny? And the man, how's the man in black? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, conversation prior to doing the interview about June's book. And somehow the subject of Johnny wearing black came up. And Jeanette says, Johnny started wearing that black back when he was again in weight, and <laughs> black don't show it as much. <laughs> And June says, don't, don't say that during the interview. Don't say that on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> That's the man she in black. She spilled the beans on why Johnny wears black. Um, but he started wearing that black, and it caught on. It became yeah. his, his trademark uniform, so yeah. to speak. And a hit song out of it, too, man. I, and, of course, you talked about it. You asked me, and we discussed a little bit about his appeal to people. 
And he made those two prison albums, San Quentin and uh, Oh man, and uh, Folsom Prison. I've got a big poster in my living room up here. Uh, you passed it a few minutes ago, coming down the hall to the studio here of Johnny uh, during the uh, recording of that album at San Quentin Prison, and that was landmark. He went against the record labels mm-hmm. to do that, and uh, it was a uh, it was a defiant move, but it was a successful move. For Johnny Cash. And like I said, we're going to continue this little discussion of the man in black and his uh, aversion to train songs and, and how train songs have been so popular over the years in country radio and in country music. In my opinion, Randy, other than love, more country music songs have been, been written about trains than anything else. Of course, the number one thing songs have been written about is love. Not always, what is the word, requited in some cases. Yeah. But then I saw one time where over 800 songs are cataloged, train songs, in country music. We're gonna we, talk we about- can't talk about all of them. <laughs> We're going to try. Coming up in our next episode of Hot Mike with Houston and Hogan, thank you all so much for downloading our show. Be sure to click the subscribe button for another episode of Hot Mike with Randy Houston and Dave Hogan.